For the first time ever, rail cars made in Japan have been supplied to Britain, the birthplace of railways. These were Hitachi rail cars, which have attained numerous achievements, both in Japan and overseas. The first large electric locomotive made in Japan, ED-15, was the origin of these rail cars. ED-15 symbolizes Hitachi's pre-war era of expansion as it evolved to become an integrated electrical machinery manufacturer. This railway locomotive, completed in 1924, is still preserved in the factory grounds. Ten years after its founding, a new era opened up for Hitachi Limited as a joint stock company. At that time, Japan was engulfed by a wave of economic depression in the wake of the buoyant economy during the First World War. Around this time, engine motive power changed from steam to electricity. In line with this, demand for electric machinery became very buoyant, and although Hitachi was severely damaged by a factory fire and in spite of the depression, it achieved steady expansion of its operations. In addition to electrical machinery such as power generators and transformers, Hitachi also strengthened its manufacturing prowess in the areas of general machinery, including water turbines and pumps. Hitachi achieved dynamic expansion into many industrial sectors. Just at this time, a massive earthquake hit Tokyo, the capital of Japan, the Great Kanto Earthquake. This magnitude 7.9 earthquake caused unprecedented damage. The Keihin industrial zone between Tokyo and Yokohama was devastated. However, the Hitachi Works, its key manufacturing facility, was not damaged. Many electrical machinery manufacturers had to suspend production. Thus, Hitachi received a massive inflow of orders from all parts of Japan. However, for Hitachi, this was a superb opportunity. At this time, President Namie Odaira said, The Keihin Industrial Zone, the key center of Japan, has been totally devastated, and so we should not indiscriminately accept orders from other parts of Japan and so overload our factories. Maximum priority was placed on restoring the capital city. Due to reconstruction after the earthquake, Hitachi began to receive orders from government ministries and major corporations on an ongoing basis. Although Hitachi was a latecomer electrical machinery manufacturer, the real value of its original technology, which it constantly enhanced, was recognized and it became a well-established company. One of Odaira's management concepts was not fixating on short-term gains, and this became the driving force of Hitachi's advancement. In 1921, Hitachi acquired Kasato Shipbuilding Facility from Nihon Kisen. Odaira converted this facility from shipbuilding to railway locomotives and rolling stock. At that time, Japan was electrifying the main Tokaido railway line. At Hitachi, we are going to make large electric locomotives built by our engineers. However, in spite of their commitment, as they were starting from zero, manufacturing did not proceed smoothly. As machinery components were made at Kasado and electric components were made at the Hitachi Works, they also had to contend with the problem of distance. However, they overcame these difficulties one by one. Finally, they were ready for test running. The tests achieved better than expected results. Hitachi took up the challenge of a new field of manufacturing. In 1926, they manufactured 5,500 electric fans. 
Here we can see one aspect of Odaira's forward-looking management thinking with the world in his sights. The next year, 1927. A major economic depression developed and Japan's economy faced a critical situation. Moreover, the global recession added fuel to the fire. At that time, Hitachi received a large and unexpected order, the construction of an entire chemical plant. However, up to that time, Hitachi had never made chemical equipment. The customer, Showa Hirio, a fertilizer producer, considered this plant to be absolutely essential for its business. If Hitachi will undertake this work, we will place the order. The trust placed in Hitachi by this customer was the deciding factor. Odaida decided to accept the order, staking the fate of the company on it. Kumeo Baba, the head of the design division, took command of this project. Initially, there were many failures. Even the smallest hole could cause a major explosion. However, the constant indomitable efforts that had enabled Hitachi to create original technology led to success, and 2,500 hydroelectric cells were made. The protracted global depression continued, and this had a major adverse effect on Kuhara Mining Company, the owner of Hitachi. The company continued to operate in the doldrums, and eventually it went bankrupt. Fusanosuke Kuhara, the founder of Hitachi Mining, resigned. Yoshisuke Aikawa, Kuhara's brother-in-law, became president in his place, and the management direction changed. Aikawa also became chairman of Hitachi Limited. However, in actual practice, management was delegated to Odaira. 1933, Hitachi went public. It moved forward with the expansion of its operations, utilizing the capital of the masses. The main factory equipment was increased and improved. In addition, in 1936, Hitachi acquired Osaka Ironworks and boldly expanded its operations. Sales in Japan increased exponentially, and Hitachi also commenced exports to Asian countries and Latin America. In addition to expansion of business, Hitachi also placed emphasis on R&D. In 1942, it established the Central Research Laboratory in Kokobunji, West Tokyo. Kumeo Baba was appointed as the first director. We set our sights mainly on 10 to 20 years ahead. This is the reason Odaira gave for establishing the CRL. Long-term vision in management made Hitachi, a technology-oriented company, even stronger. In the 10-year period from 1933 to 1943, sales increased about 26-fold. The number of employees rose to over 100,000, and Hitachi attained a position as a leading integrated electrical machinery manufacturer. As Japan emerged from the recession, it boosted its economic strength. However, it became increasingly isolated from the rest of the world, and this led to the outbreak of war. Japan came under military control, and Hitachi works were forced to convert to designated military plants. In 1945, B-29 aircraft bombed the Hitachi works. It was destroyed and many people died. Then the war ended. Odaida instructed the employees as follows. Hitachi is reverting to peacetime industries. I require your cooperation in this time of special need. Plans for reconstruction were quickly made. 
In that time of scarcity of materials, Hitachi made pots, pans, and cooking heaters. In 1946, in the confusion of the post-war era, the U.S. occupation forces conducted a second purge of public officials and executives. At Hitachi Limited, 16 executives, including President Odaira, were purged. As the process of rehabilitating Hitachi progressed, Chikara Kurata was appointed as the new president. He commented on his feelings as follows. At that time, I was very unsure of whether to accept. However, he accepted the post. The words of Odaira helped him to make this decision. Do not indulge in false modesty. Kurata thought back on the words of Odaira at a time when he was given the task of manufacturing electric wires. You can do it. The first obstacle Kurata confronted was the dissolution of the conglomerates. Kurata and other executives fought strongly to oppose the proposed breakup of Hitachi. Unlike the conglomerates, Hitachi is a company supported by public capital and 60,000 shareholders. He negotiated strongly and convincingly, and eventually it was decided not to break up Hitachi. In 1949, Hitachi overcame the danger of company dissolution. In June 1951, Odaira's dismissal from the company was rescinded. Kurata strongly urged that Odaira should reassume the post of president. However, Odaira firmly refused, and he was appointed as an advisor. Soon after, on October 4th, Odaira became ill, and early the next morning before dawn, he passed away. In his latter years, Odaida was encouraged to write something for posterity, and he wrote, Honesty. His spirit still lives on in the Hitachi of today.